Many of you may remember the 1994 movie Speed with Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves. It's about a bus that is rigged with a bomb that would blow up if the bus slowed down at all. The situation leads the protagonist through a perilous journey through LA traffic at high speed, all while being unable to slow down. Since this channel is called Airspace and not Ground Space, we're not going to take a look at a bus in trouble today, but an Airbus. More precisely an Airbus A330 by Cathay Pacific Airways that could not slow down when descending to land. If you liked the video, please subscribe for weekly aviation videos. It helps me out a lot. Welcome to Airspace. On April 13th, 2010, Cathay 780 departed from Chuanda International Airport, which is the third busiest airport in Indonesia. The Airbus A330's crew had stayed overnight there and was now homebound for Hong Kong. About half an hour into the flight, after the plane had leveled off at cruising altitude, the plane's computers alerted the pilots to a malfunction of their right engine. To be more specific, it showed that the right engine had a problem with its control unit. Despite some small fluctuations in thrust, the engine seemed to run normally. Still, such an error is not quite common to see, so the crew contacted their maintenance department via satellite phone. As all other engine parameters seemed normal, the maintenance department advised that the crew should continue to Hong Kong, where the engine would be inspected closely. The crew complied and continued their flight. However, a while later, the fault came on again, and again the crew called their maintenance department, who again reassured them that they should continue on, which the crew then did. When they approached Hong Kong, the pilots started their descent. Some minutes later, as the plane descended through 23,000 feet, they received two alerts in short succession, a warning that now the left engine had a problem with its control system and that the right engine had stalled. An engine stall means that the flow of air through the engine is disturbed or has even reversed partially. It is often accompanied by a series of loud bangs. The crew followed their checklists and reduced the thrust of the stalling right engine to idle, which is the minimum available thrust in flight. They also declared the second highest level of distress, a so-called pan-pan call, and requested the shortest possible approach into Hong Kong. As the plane then descended through 8,000 feet, the situation became really dire. The engine sensors indicated that both engines were stalling now, and the checklists demanded that both engines should be reduced to idle thrust. The crew tried this initially, but soon found themselves to be coming too slow with just idle thrust. They declared mayday and tried to use the stalling right engine again, but it did not deliver any more thrust than less than idle anymore, which is not a lot. Then they decided they needed thrust somehow and re-advanced the left engine's thrust lever again. This engine responded and delivered 74% of its maximum thrust. When the aircraft started the approach to Hong Kong's runway 07 left, the pilots wanted to deploy the landing gear and the flaps and therefore needed to slow down. Baffled, they realized that neither engine was responding now. The right engine was barely turning, but the left one was providing high thrust stuck at 74%. The pilots decided that their safest option would be to land anyways, since they were losing control over the engines more and more. Their descent must have been a crazy ride since the plane did not slow down for landing, it only accelerated more and more. The crew touched down at 231 knots, that is 265 miles per hour or 426 kilometers per hour. This is a crazy high number as it is almost double the normal approach speed and exceeds both design limits for the A330's tires and wing flaps. The aircraft bounced back in the air when it touched down first and struck its left engine onto the runway and only then finally settled onto the runway. The captain applied full brake force and used reverse thrust on the engine that was stuck at high thrust, which provided excellent braking. The stricken airliner came to a standstill just short of the runway end with the brakes literally smoking. The left engine still provided high thrust at this point, but the pilots were luckily able to shut it down from the cockpit. Fire services responded immediately and reported brake temperatures of over 1000 degrees at which point safety devices released the pressure of the tires so that they would not blow up. Still, small fires started as the rubber of the huge tires started to ignite from the heat of the superheated brakes. The pilots decided to evacuate the aircraft. Everyone made it out alive, some with scratches and bruises. This happens often when aircraft are evacuated, as an evacuation is often hectic and the speeds one attains on the evacuation slides are quite high, so injuries like sprained ankles are common. 
With everyone safe, the investigation soon began. Since the pilots were confronted with not one, but two engines showing the same kind of malfunction at the same time, more or less out of nowhere, they must have assumed that there must have been a common denominator that disturbed the both power plants. Soon, the investigators found a possible culprit. They found microscopically small particles of a superabsorbent polymer in the fuel system. These particles were spherical in shape and appeared to be in every nook and cranny of the fuel lines and engines. But how did they get there and did they have an effect on the engines? To find out, we must go back a few weeks when the airport of Chuanda extended its fuel hydrant network. In earlier times, planes used to get refueled with tanker trucks, but for larger fuel loads, this became unpractical and a subterranean network of fuel pipework was installed. Apparently, these works had not been conducted according to the standards required, and salt water was able to enter the pipes and contaminate the fuel contained in them. On the day Cathay 780 was fueled, a fuel pumping truck was used to fuel the Airbus A330. Such fuel trucks do not contain fuel themselves, but they feature large pumps that pump the fuel from the underground lines into the aircraft. As the refueling operator was refueling the Airbus, he observed some strange vibration of the refueling hoses, but thought nothing of it and did not report it. At this time, his fuel pumping truck had pumped fuel that was contaminated with salt water. It passed through filter screens inside the truck, which contained superabsorbent polymers. These are installed to filter out trace amounts of water present in all jet fuels, or, for example, condensation. The superabsorbent polymers were not intended for the use of salt water and were released from the filter screens into the fuel, which was then pumped into the plane. As the plane climbed and used varying levels of thrust, no problems arose since the amount of water in the tanks was small enough to be negligible. However, in crews, the superabsorbent polymer spheres contained in the fuel started to accumulate in several parts of the engines. You see, fuel is not only used for combustion, but also as a hydraulic liquid actuating several parts of the jet engine. When they reached quantities large enough to block some of the components, the first engine control system warning was issued. As the flight progressed, more and more particles accumulated in the various valves and actuators of the complex engine and rendered them only partially usable or even inoperative. In the end, the particles block the main metering valves of each engine, which regulate the amount of fuel that is routed to the burn chambers and hence control the amount of thrust the engine delivers. Therefore, the thrust levels at the time of blockage were locked at a value of 75% for the left engine and sub-idle for the right engine. The aircraft's fuel system and engines were meticulously overhauled and the small damages repaired. It was then returned to service and was still flying until mid-August 2020 when it was withdrawn from service due to the ongoing health crisis. But it is still perfectly usable and could be reactivated at any time. In my view, this was an absolutely fascinating case. There was a lot of luck involved for the 322 occupants of the A330. Had the engines both failed at idle thrust at another stage of the flight, this could have easily turned into an all-engine out situation and a landing or ditching without power. Also, hats off to the two pilots who managed to land the massive airliner hurtling through the air at almost double the normal approach speed with a moderate crosswind blowing at Hong Kong at the time of landing. This was no easy feat. In March 2014, the two young pilots involved, Captain Malcolm Waters, 35 at the time, and First Officer David Hayhoe, 37 at the time, were awarded the Polaris Award by the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations for their heroism and airmanship. Thank you very much for watching. Next week we are going to take a look at the famous case of a Boeing 747 that lost thrust on all engines. If you liked the video, please subscribe if you think I earned it. See you in the next one.